60 seconds and counting. We are go for Apollo 7 at this time. speaker is an uh, educator and disclosure project witness. She became the first female executive in an aerospace company where she was a spokesperson for the uh, late Dr. Werner von Braun, a satellite consultant and manager of special projects. She is executive director of Peace and Emergency Action Coalition for Earth, Peace for short. She is the founder of Institute for security and cooperation in outer space. She is an ambassador for the International Association of Educators for World Peace and a UN NGO in consultative status with the UN Economic and Social Council. Her website is peaceinspace.com. Uh, she has been uh, tremendously instrumental as an insider of sorts to help get the word out and warn about how a potential fake ET threat would be used against us something that was issued as a warning by German rocket scientist Werner von Braun during, the, during his time at NASA. She has also testified before Congress on many occasions about space-based weapons. Please give a round of applause for Dr. Carol Rosen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, and Bjorn, for inviting me to come, for all of you for sitting through all this. If you need to stand up and stretch in the middle, please just do it. I understand, or fan yourself. I know I'm not the only one having hot flashes up here. Um, I have not got my slides, but to make sure that we don't have any kind of technical difficulties, I have my speech. Thank you for recycling. This is it. So, as some of you know, I have been on a very long journey to get here. I'm going to share with you in a short amount of time to try to um, speed up the process so we can catch up on time. A lot of information, um, most of it from my heart. I'm so appreciative for being here because I got to hear these speakers. You know, a lot of the conferences have mega conferences and here's one at a time. These people have done the most amazing research. I had no idea. And I feel like kind of a snot because I didn't listen to most of them all these years. And I was also afraid to speak out because it's been very difficult, as you know, for people like me who have worked in the aerospace defense industry to tell the truth. And so I'm going to give you a little bit more of that today, too. Um, my focus has been mostly on strategy, on process. So thankfully, with the, all of the other speakers, the research has been done. And it's so intense that I hope you'll share with all your friends and those listening around the world streaming or on YouTubes, however you get this information, don't miss even one of these speeches, because as you see, they paint a picture. And what to me that leads to is, how do we get out of this mess? Where do we go from here? There's a lady in the Netherlands that just set up a Facebook page for me, Carol Rosen, Next Step. And that's what I'm thinking, because a lot of what we've been doing over the years has been observing what's going on, experiencing what's going on, and we've all had tremendous life experiences, some of us with live ETs in one way or another coming through the walls. I could never admit such a thing because I have to stay credible and not experience too much of the ridicule factor. So I'm going to share some messages for you as well in this talk. And what we've been presenting that's been my experience has been in kind of an earth-bound perspective. So how do we see it from a space perspective? And how do we fit that in to what's happening in the complex? And I define that complex as the military industrial complex, but I add in military industry, laboratories, universities, intelligence communities, NASA and other international space agencies. There are many now around the world and government, government's complex. And where can we as individuals and as a group have an impact and help change the situation? 
One of the things that I loved about this conference, and Catherine talked me into coming, thank you, Catherine, be, is because we had a meeting of speakers before, we have a meeting of speakers after, we have round tables where you can ask questions, and then we're going to be staying here afterwards to have conversations with everyone to get your ideas and to figure out where we can network and connect and what we can do together. The follow-up to me, fortunes in the follow-up, the follow-up is the most important part of what's happening today because in the issue that I've focused on, banning space-based weapons, which I'll explain more of, we only get one chance. And there's so much disinformation about this issue, so much research that some of which is great, some of which is just passed on through history, and then it gets quoted, fact, 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 except sometimes the facts are not quite the truth, have you noticed? And so now we have one chance in history, literally in history, so we're it, to get a ban on space-based weapons. Can we do it? Yes. yes, we can. And we can if we do it as individuals, again, and as a group as well, and as we reach out to the world community, because this is not a national USA issue. No, this is a global world issue, and more than that, it's a cosmic issue. And some of you who have been in contact know that there are cultures from other places who are here, visiting here. There's no question about it. And I want to add to this, and again, I'll go into this more. You have to get a grip on the fact that none of them are hostile. Because yes, some people have had experiences, bad, 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 heard news, bad, 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 about other experiences. And we're taught, we are so carefully taught, that we have to have an enemy, or at least be afraid of one, or maybe they're going to be an enemy. In fact, Von Braun, whom I'm going to talk about too, because many of you have asked me about my personal relationship and experience with him, the Nazi. You know, we, we have learned, I have learned from him, about a leapfrog technology, about a leapfrog strategy that's been taking place through history. And I've also learned the formula for how wars are caused and how we got to this place. And the answer to the big question, why are they keeping this secret? Why? I'm going to answer that one first. Yes, it's complex, and there are lots and lots of reasons underneath all of this, but the main one, and again, I'm coming out of being uh, the first woman corporate manager of an aerospace company, a space and missile defense consultant. I've worked across the board and testified before the House and Senate. So I've been playing in that revolving door game. Why do they keep it a secret? The real reason is, and Richard and, and Joseph and many of the speakers have touched on this, to dominate and control everything and everyone on Earth and in space from space. And you and I are alive at that very moment in time when that becomes possible. So the ground forces are being set up called Missile Defense Global Protection System, all kinds of names for it. It was Strategic Defense Initiative when I got in on it, SDI. I changed that to uh, Space Development Initiative so they could keep their logo, but they didn't buy that. So now we see that the whole ground-based weapon system is being put into place to control that space-based weapon system. And the tests that were just mentioned by Joseph Harp and all of that mind control technology, that's what caused me to resign from my job, by the way, my big cushy corporate job, was when I heard the word psychotronic, psychotronic weapons. And now I'll get into Von Braun a little bit, but know that this whole purpose of this secret is so that we can be distracted, lied to, lied about, presented with myths, legends, all kinds of disinformation and misinformation, sometimes intentional, sometimes unintentional, because it's so hard to discern for who's telling the truth and what to believe, isn't it? It sure was for me along the way, and I kept waking up, waking up until I got here, and then I went, oh my God, there's so much that's been done. The foundation is here of information. These are the best of the best presenting this information. Yeah. Yeah, they really are. And so how do we move forward if, in fact, this is such a huge game? It is so well-funded, and most of us are not. 
we're struggling. So thanks for paying to get here and for streaming or whatever you've done to help contribute to this event, because this is only the beginning of what I see as a whole new phase that's going to get us out of this mess. So OK, I mentioned to you the leapfrog. Here's how one of the formulas works in the aerospace, defense, military, industrial part of the complex. They have to, in fact, think this way. Maybe they have weapons over here. Maybe they're going to. In our case, I just called one of the people that works in one of these defense organizations before I came here, and I said, OK, years ago, you said to me, I have a secret, and if only I could tell you, you'd really understand what's going on. So what was your secret? Can you tell me now 10 years later? And he said, well, now Snowden's done it. If we talked about the NRO or any of those organizations, we would be put in jail when we worked in those industries. I, OK, so what's the next one? And he started to go into, well, what if, ready for this, North Korea or Iran or one of these other smaller countries puts weapons in space first. And there goes the beginning of the next phase of the leapfrog. They might have the technology. They might use it. OK, we have to consider that they do have it. OK, if they do have it, let's just proceed ahead like they do have it. Now we have to get it. But they're going to know that we're going to get this technology. So we have to get a better one. And then they have to get a better one. So OK, by the time they're finished, these countries are enemies, enemies, enemies. And they're really super afraid of these countries. Now, what do we do about that? I'm going to tell you, because it all leans towards the international cooperation and things that are going on that we haven't talked about here yet, but I will, how the world is coming together, whether those people who want to do that leapfrog formula or not. And that is also happening simultaneously and simultaneously to us bringing out the issue of the UFO issue, which is real, obviously. And it is one of the main secrets being kept because of if you, how many of you saw the disclosure project and the last card? OK, if you haven't, please go to disclosure project on YouTube. And if you ha can't do that, part of the other formula was when I first in 74 got into the industry. I'll just tell you this quickly because a few people have seen it. The, this part of the formula that I experienced was I go, get into the aerospace industry. I've been a school teacher, elementary school teacher before that. Now I'm an aerospace executive moving up. They need women to be moved up the corporate ranks and my legs. That's how I got that job. So now I get into this position and the Russians are the threat. The next threat, and I'm going to just speed this and do an overview. The next enemy that we're going to say we need space-based weapons against are the third world countries or nations of concern. Speeding up a little bit. Then we need them for asteroids. I didn't say in the disclosure project, but one of the reasons will be that we need space-based weapons to protect our assets, our ass assets, assets, assets in space. And then the last card will be pulled when people start stop believing that we have this enemy and that enemy. Notice, however old you are, how many wars you've been through. We just keep moving on, on, on to the next war. And in each war, they're doing the next weapon system, part of the formula. Keeps the aerospace defense industry, military industrial complex going. Feeds the university students with something that they think they might be able to get a job in later gives NASA and the other space organizations a vision that they can fit their civilian public relations space program into. And now the last card is going to be the alien threat. And it's all a lie. It doesn't exist. And if you're believing that, you need therapy or you need to get some facts. So you really have to get this because if you don't, and you go out now after today and say, well, maybe the national security system might need a weapon, or I heard my friend had a really bad experience of blah, blah, blah. That feeds that war game. Part of that leapfrog technology is that they incorporate the kinds of things that we say. I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes a document that's going to get me in a lot of trouble, because it came out of the Heritage Foundation. And I tried to testify with it. After I testified before the Senate Armed Services Committee one time, 
I brought this out and said, here, this is going to be submitted as my written part of my testimony. And I'll never forget a couple of senators coming down to me and saying, well, we can't put that in there. We know the Heritage Foundation didn't write that. But it says HF, and it's got all their logos of someone in there sneaked it to me on a corner one day. And I said, no, this isn't. And they said, you wrote it. I wrote it. <laughs> you know, I'm coming out of a sixth grade classroom. I'm being overwhelmed by Werner von Braun, and I'm supposed to give his speeches for him. And I wrote that and testified with it in 1983. And they said, yes, you must have written this. No, no. What I did do with it, since they wouldn't let me present it, I don't think it ever did get onto the congressional record, because it was the formula that I'm sharing with you, many parts of it, I mirrored it, mirrored it for years. People that would come along and say, OK, where can I help? What can I do? We ended up in a three-story building in Washington. We were just funding it with speeches and writing and whatever we could. And we mirrored what it said in this. And it was how to edge. In fact, one of the quotes in it is, we will steal the language of the arms control community regardless of the merits or non-merits of the system. So you notice they use our language, which is why I'm saying you don't know how important not only your thoughts are, but how you present this issue. We must not come from fear. We must come from a higher vision, a better, even if you are scared and you believe it, please, at least come out with what you can. Remember the word imagine here? Imagine what it could be in space. What is in space and what could be in space is where you and I need to go with this issue. What is and what can be in space. Imagine it. Get your children to draw it. They know what it can be. And that's how we have to present that leapfrog, because otherwise, they're going to keep using our words. Well, look, he says we might need this because maybe we need it for national security. And that's a very normal, very intelligent perspective. That's not a stupid perspective. That is a real perspective. But it isn't going to change anything, I can tell you that. Right now, it's going to be used. And another formula that I want to share with you before I get into parts on Von Braun is there's another part of this. Here's one of the reasons why war keeps happening, why they keep doing this one after another after another, and all the suffering and destruction and all the things that are not getting paid attention to. And I don't want to get into all the dark parts because you know the problems on this planet. I don't think there's anyone in here that doesn't know it because it's all been put into our minds in fact, it's actually happening. We could experience total obliteration, you want me to get really dark, by one of, any one of a number of man-made or natural disasters right now. And I don't think there are too many of us that don't know that. I mean, this is something serious that's going on on this planet. However, again, one of the reasons that we keep going into war is they have to dump the old weapons, test the new ones, and rationalize the budget for the next set of weapons. You hear how simple that is? And that's the way it goes. They have a war. You will see they had to dump the old weapon system. They've now done a lot of R&D, put all that money. Where's that money going? A lot of money going into the research and development programs. The space-based weapons program, by the way, is one of the biggest R&D programs in recorded history. It's just like everyone's been saying here, hidden back in the budgets. But it's out there. My job at TRW was hidden. I was told if I talked about the MX missile, they would deny that I even worked on it. So maybe you can't even find me. You can't find me on Wikipedia anymore. I got erased. <laughs> you know, the, the thing that we thought was an encyclopedia that's all manipulated. Anybody can go in and put your biography up, then criticize it, then wave you out. This happened to a lot of people, not just me. But they can manipulate you. They can erase you, they can threaten you, they can mind control you. And then where do we get our information from but the media? So the military industrial complex and all of that also includes the media. And then they actually track this formula. They show us how they go into the war scene. They show us, they show us we're not too aware of this, most of us. This weapon system was just dumped. Now they've come up with the next weapon system that they just funded, researched, and developed. They can now launch into space under the guise of calling it merely research. But they can deploy something into space under merely dis dis research. 
And no, there are not any space-based weapons. What I'm not, I'm not talking about weapons launched from the ground, coming up and coming down, no. I'm talking about weapons that can be based <clears throat> on celestial bodies, on craft, based permanently in space. There are no space-based weapons in spite of the rumors, in spite of the stories. Yes, you have videos and they can be interpreted many, many different ways. And one of the problems with that formula, dump the old weapons, test the new one, and rationalize the budgets for the next set of weapons is that the perception and the interpretation of the information that gets out there is, I think, what's gotten to most of us. How do we interpret this information that we're hearing? How do we perceive it? And then, how do we discern for what the truth is? Because how can you believe me? Who am I that you should believe? But I am going to tell you the truth all the way through this. I always have, and most of you who know me know that. Um, and it's a great risk, as some of the speakers have said. I won't go into my personal story, but I can tell you I have learned the hard way about the risk of doing this truth-telling bit. And I'm ready to quit. But I think none of us can quit right now. I think if we're not depressed, you ought to be in therapy. And I think we actually have to keep going with everything we've got right now, because those are the main formulas. And again, very important to know that the seize the high ground is the theme of the defense guidance plan from back in the 40s, 50s. You can look up if it's still on the internet. If it isn't, contact me and I will send it to you. The Vision 2020 came out of the Air Force. On almost every page, it says domination and control, domination and control, full spectrum domination and control. Beautifully colored. And it is astonishing that they put that out there because it really gave some of us in the industry a reason to be cheering. Boy, that means bigger budgets. That means more money. My expense account, whew, I could be making so much money right now. <laughs> and it's just what is. Now, Von Brown, how did I get into this? One minute, I was teaching elementary school. Then, and we launched our classroom into outer space, communicated with world leaders. It was a writing lesson in a very low socioeconomic area. They were looking for a woman in the days of EEOC equal opportunity to be pushed up the corporate ranks of industry. And my little article appeared in the newspaper. A parent put it in, students studying on spaceship Earth. And people were writing to Fairchild Industries, where Werner von Braun, the father of rocketry, Escaped from Nazi Pinamunda Hitler, was now vice president. Some of you know, he took over NASA, he developed the space program. Some people are going, oh no, the Nazis, including me. I was invited up to Fairchild Industries to meet him because my article was causing teachers to write to Fairchild Industries, aerospace company, with Von Braun there, saying, can we communicate, can we be pen pals with your kids? in space, and of course it was all our classroom. When you walked in the door, you were decontaminated at the door with a hairdryer because you were a UFO, and we didn't know what you had going on with you. So then it went on from there. I got sent into Werner von Braun's office for a 10-minute meeting that lasted for over a couple of hours. And he said, you will come to Fairchild. You will be here in three weeks. And I said, oh no, teachers don't quit until July. This is February 74. And he was mesmerizing. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about him, because I asked a lot of people here what you wanted to hear from me, because my background goes across the board on this stuff. And what he was was an extraordinary, loving, gentle, kind of little boy scientist, excited about going into space. He told me stories, many, many stories, of how they actually did what he called escape and get to America. How, when they were first brought here, when he left Pinamunda, uh, they were put in barracks. Actually, they were hospital barracks that were not being used in Fort Bliss, Texas. And that's where they had to stay. They weren't allowed to talk to people or see anybody. They met a few little handful of people that would invite them for barbecues that, you know, and get to know them somewhat, one of whom I'll tell you about. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Winterstein, who died not too long ago, just within the last couple of years at 90-something, 90 93, I think. He, um, at these, 
scientists and engineers that came over here were all really rocket scientists. They just wanted to explore space, go out into space, and they wanted to live in peace. They had been through it. And, you know, if you think, okay, maybe he worked, obviously he worked. I mean, you have to know he worked at the Nazis. I mean, you have to get a grip on that for sure. But then when people wake up, like me included, who are in the aerospace defense industry, believing that national security is what it's all about, and we need to protect everybody and whatever. And they came over as patriotic Americans, inevitably. They, wanted, they would have done anything for here, for, for, are we, for in America. And the fact of the matter is they were ridiculed. Once again, they were lied to, lied about. They had to then work on missiles, and they wanted to work on spacecraft after Sputnik went up, the Russian Sputnik satellite. They got to do theirs. They were actually building it secretively in a closet because they just couldn't stop building these spacecrafts. They were really like little boys with space toys. And they had their families here. It was very, very hard on them. And when he would describe that to me, most of the time he was in tears. And again, you may know, when I met him, he was dying of cancer. So we didn't know how long he was going to live. And so that made it an even more intense conversation because there were a lot of truths that he wanted to get out. And the main message of truth was that the way to get to peace is by developing peace in space. But it was very hard for them to get that message out because they were... Von Braun was really the spokesperson for the group. And he had a lovely, charming personality. And so he made jokes all the time. He smoked cigarettes too much. And he was kind of a person that would have done anything to get this message out. And I was the, the person that he said, you will come to Fairchild and you will prevent the weaponization of space to. And what was his reason for that? picture that I'm sitting across from his desk in his office and he was scribbling on a piece of paper the whole time he was talking to me and at the end he ripped off this end of the paper and it had the word humor humor in little circles and he said it's going to get so serious at some point that you've got to maintain your sense of humor and before I left you you may have seen my husband on the disclosure project if you saw it he was the actor who introduced Stephen Greer in the Disclosure Project. And I was so lucky to be a witness on that. As you can probably see, I'm sort of a reluctant traveler. Um, I'm, believe it or not, actually a kind of quiet person <laughs> on the shy side of life. I really don't like speaking very much, but I know that this has to come out. So there I was at the Disclosure Project. And thankfully, Danny Sheehan was there. And so we sat on one end of the table and I said, turn the lights away from me. So, you know, let the other people be seen. I'll hide over here behind you, Danny. Two white-haired people, they won't notice me. So that's kind of how the Disclosure Project went. And at that Disclosure Project is where I got to see that there were more people than just me who have had these experiences and they have credentials and they should be respected. And everybody in the world should be able to hear these witnesses too just like the speakers here. So do spread that around disclosureproject.org. You can see on YouTube or read their testimonies. It's amazing the credentialed people that come out about this subject. And Von Braun, who had some secrets about this and would only be able to talk to me between the lines about this issue because of the threats and because they were really afraid of what they could say, obviously knew that there was a reality here because he was constantly steering me into the direction of what we now call in the treaty that I'm going to make available to you over here. You see a stack of papers that will ban all space-based weapons. Von Braun wanted to do nothing more towards the end than prevent the weaponization of space. At the Disclosure Project, we heard all kinds of testimonies from people who have had real experiences. My only testimony was a Von Braun statement. That was the one I kind of started with about uh, the wars and how they were developing up to the last card. The last card would be the alien threat, and it's all a lie. And boy, did it's all a lie go out all over. 
I didn't even really know what Facebook was at the time, and I started getting so many, I mean, literally thousands of emails from people saying, yes, it's all a lie, what do we do? And that's what we know. We know it's a lie. There's so many lies. How do we get, again, above that? That's what Von Braun wanted us to focus on. And now I really get it. There are so many pieces of the vision that he put out before, when he first started talking about this issue at NASA, they didn't have anything like booklets on just the spin-offs of space. I'm gonna go over this with you a little bit later, but I want you to see, you can get these books free, or you can, they can download them for you. They are so beautiful. This, these are NASA spin-off books. They have them for every year. I have them back about 10 years now. They didn't have them, of course, when he was around like this. But again, you can download them right onto your computer if you go to the NASA main website. And on it are all these amazing benefits that come from space technology and information services. I mean to health, education, to security, to environmental issues. It's all in here, to safety of all kinds, safety issues, to our evolution and growth, spiritually, psychologically, socially, on Earth and into space. When you go through this kind of information, and you get this again from the NASA website, you actually get a vision of what's going on in space and what's possible to go into space. How many of you have uh, copies of this or have seen this book, these books? One, that's, that's part of the problem of, I think, this secret space program and UFO issue because the vision is to me as big a secret as is the UFO issue. And I'll tell you why that's so important, the vision. Von Braun, of course, we know, anyone who knows him or knows of him, was one of the greatest visionaries of our time. Um, I, I didn't even have such a huge appreciation of him until after he was gone, because I didn't know. I was so absorbed in the fact that I was sitting in an aerospace company, and they made me buy a big car, and I had an office with a couch and a desk, and I asked them to take the bomber airplane pictures off the wall. That's kind of where I was at that time in a miniskirt. I mean, it wasn't like I was real sophisticated in all of this. But Von Braun was constantly talking about what there could be in outer space. And why was he talking about that? Just because he was a rocket scientist interested in going into space? No. I'll tell you why, and this is the most profound part of it. What is the program that can replace the war program that is causing the secret, the secret space program to exist? What can possibly replace the war program that's big enough, grand enough, that has enough money involved, enough jobs and profits, enough products and services that come out of it? What is the biggest program that could remove that fear factor, have, allow us to rise above it, and see how the world is actually wanting to come together, and in many parts of the world it is? It's the space program. It is the space program, and what's the hint? That's where the aerospace industry and the military complex is going. Whether we like it or not, obviously, they are headed for outer space. And I want you to picture the Earth surrounded by weapons, 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 weapons. Okay, you can already see pictures of hundreds of thousands of pieces of space junk that are possibly gonna close us in or cause a catastrophe if they hit one of these hits one of our satellites or a series of satellites that would be connected that could cause complete blackout, no communication, no transportation, no food deliveries, no water, no migration, nothing. Imagine, we can see that picture, but not many picture, people picture the Earth surrounded by weapon systems. And in space, 22,300 miles above the Earth, geosynchronous orbit, three weapon systems at that orbit hit the footprint 
of the entire planet. I mean, we have to get a ban on space-based weapons. Those who can get this, we really have to do this. And we better do it fast, because they're speeding up that program. It's accelerating, unlike anything even I could imagine. And I've been tracking this for 40 years. By the way, this day, a couple of days from now, was the exact day that I, I gave my first speech for Von Braun, 40 years ago. Uh, just on me, I was going to speak, I'll digress for a second here, to the National Education Association conference in McCormick Hall in Chicago, 18,000 people. And the only other speech I had given before was about mustard being squirted in the cafeteria. I've told this story before, and I had to rehearse that the night, in, the night before in a mirror. Uh, you know, and so now I'm going to speak to 18,000 people. And what was that about? It was a live satellite demonstration. Now, we're reaching out all over the world that people can stream in on this, right? But then, this had not been done before. So we had the Fiji Islands, we had a few little countries and a couple of people in different places in the States plugged into this. And I was, he couldn't go. Oh, this is really amazing. He couldn't, what's amazing is that he transmitted the speech into my left ear from a distance. He couldn't go, he was too ill. And just like I'm talking to you, if I turn around, you can still hear me. I can hear him in my left ear. And I'm at the podium with pink index cards because he gave me some notes that I was to read out of a book and the light went out on the podium and I couldn't see them. And um, he came in, how he knew I was there, I have no idea. I think someone was supposed to call him and say, it's okay, she's here, she made it, she's at the podium. And I think that's what happened. And there he was saying things like, talk, say what I'm going to say. See, you ban this, K ban that. I had no idea what I was saying, but I could hear him so clearly in my ear. Later, he told me, and I was, by the way, introducing a, the first live satellite demonstration to educators. And I also had to explain to the educators that this satellites were not going to take over their jobs. This was in a day when, as educators, we thought technology was going to take over our jobs. They wouldn't need us anymore. So this was an amazing experience. But listen, one of the reasons that he was doing it that way to me, although there was no phone anyway, was to tell me, he told me later, what psychotronic meant. How do you move a beam so that it could control people? How does that work? Well, I don't know how, to, what, how my car works when I turn on the car. But I still don't know how that works either. But he tried to explain it to me. I'm not technical enough, but he did it. And he could communicate with me from a distance. So you hear people say mind control is happening? Believe it. But no, it's earthbound. Now imagine it 22,300 miles above the Earth with some sort of weapons technology hitting the whole footprint of the Earth with the goal of full spectrum dominance to dominate how we think, how we act, as an individual, as a group, whether we're sick, whether we're well, as an individual or a group. I don't mean to exactly put the fear of that into us. I just want us to be aware of what's going on here that made me give up my cushy little job and then have some experiences along the way where I was told not to talk about this sort of thing. And it's really important right now because it's starting to happen. And the rumors are, a lot of rumors, as you've heard, oh, they're already fighting in space, already weapons in space, whatever, whatever. Even if there were space-based weapons, we have a treaty here that I'll go over very briefly so you can take it home and look at it, that will ban all space-based weapons. Now I'm going to slide into this, and I'm going to jump around a little bit. Excuse me, I was sort of a Buckminster Fuller protege, and he was all over the place, but he always had a through line of action. That's what he told me. So I'm going to, I kind of speak that way. One of the things that I want to mention to you is, is that a good piece of news, a great piece of news in the middle of all this. Just last week, now keeping in mind there are many of us that have been trying to figure out how to end the arms race and 
disarm or whatever. We're not going to disarm yet, but we do have a way of putting a lid on the whole weapons industry and transforming it now, like I said, into a space industry. Here's the good news. About a week ago, a little bit more than that, the Russians and the Chinese came out with a statement that they want to update their treaty of 2008 to prevent the weaponization of outer space. They've said it. It's not in our news. It's in alternative news. Yes. Yes. And one of our assignments, by the way, is going to be to communicate with those world leaders to get them to look at the complete treaty that we've been, a group of us have been working on for many, many decades now because they want to update their treaty that they proposed in the conference committee at the UN. Yeah, the UN has its flaws, but that's where they put these treaties now, and this is where the agreements, we're going to use this as a tool, again, rising above the bad parts that we know about, and let's use everything we've got to make this work. They have the opportunity now to ban space-based weapons, and Argentina, of all countries, has come out with the statement, well, we're not going to be first to put weapons in space. That's the beginning. The way this new treaty is written is it will, in fact, only need nine world leaders. That's the way this one's written. Now, they may modify it when they get into their conference committee, but you and I have to get them copies of this. This treaty requires only nine, the number of completion metaphysically, nine leaders to sign and ratify, which means then they take it back to their Congress or Parliament, whatever's in their country. They sign and ratify it. They send it to the UN Secretary General. This is our plan that shortcuts the usual process through the UN that often doesn't work. They send it to the Secretary General, who is the treaty depository. That's what it's called. And then the Secretary General announces this is now world law. We have banned space-based weapons. Simple. We're going to keep everything so simple now because complex is the right word for what's going on, isn't it? It is so complex. I mean, if you really listen to all these speakers, it can sound complex, but they've made it so simple here. And I'm just going to add on another layer to it. This simple ban on space-based weapons, no matter what you think about this issue, has got to happen. And now I'm going to add on another piece of this news. Some of us have been told, and you may be among the people who are told, that when we can confirm that the human species has evolved enough, the cosmic cultures, I call them, ETs, cosmic cultures, will come in and land. They just have to know we're not going to be shooting them down and we're not going to have our little games that we play, war games, going on. And this is going to put a lid on that war industry, but not to stop it. Have you ever tried to stand in front of the Pentagon, stop, stop, you know, uh-uh, it ain't gonna happen. They're just not gonna stop. It's a good thing to do, it makes us feel good, we're doing something, but they're gonna keep going. Unless, like I learned as an elementary school teacher, and some of you parents have learned if you have children, you give them something else to do when they're fighting. And then generally, they will want something else to do unless they need further help. Right now, if they need further help, I'm kind of walking away from toxic negatives. That's just my pattern right now. I just want to know who the people are that want to help make a change happen. So the change is not to stop the weaponization of space or to stop anything. It is to transform it, to evolve it allow an Aikido. You know what Aikido, the martial arts is? You kind of go with the flow. You don't fight. You go with the flow of the energy. That's what we're doing. That's the only way. You can't, it doesn't work. You may have learned to confront when you're getting a divorce or you're trying to change something. It just doesn't work. It's too negative. It's making us sick. And we need to get well. We need to come from a love place, for lack of a better way of saying it, a love energy, a love frequency. If we stay in that earthbound frequency that's confused at best and negative at worst, with negative thoughts included, we're going to keep getting sicker 
our environment's going to keep getting sicker. We're not going to be able to come up with the innovations and breakthroughs that we know are possible. And we can do it. Do I have a time? Ah, you want me over here. I, I, I haven't done my Botox. <laughs> I should not be here. OK, we, sorry. we really have to come up with another vision. And the vision includes an Aikido of how we evolve into outer space. And that's what this conference to me is about. Yeah, it's about politics, economics, it's about history, it's about all the ways that we got from there to here. Oh, is that important. Some people say you have to know the history in order to not make it happen again. I'm not so sure because a lot of people know the history and things keep happening too. But my reasoning is, that we haven't had anything big enough to replace the war industry and mindset. And that's what Werner von Braun was about. In spite of these Nazi rumors, I, uh, I almost can't hear it. I feel so sorry for these people. And I feel sorry for anybody that's getting persecuted that's just trying to tell the truth or getting put down or ridiculed or separated from family and friends because of it, let alone from a job or from your own healthy, happy life, which we all want to have, but it's pretty hard to when you see what's going on on this planet, isn't it? So what Von Braun was about was an amplified version, and it got injected into me. Here's a man draining with tubes coming out of his body, and he's saying you have to keep weapons out of space, and there's a bigger game, and it's called outer space, and there are benefits and opportunities, unlimited more jobs and profits than during any hot or cold war time, more products and services that can be applied directly to solving problems, not just as spin-offs, but the spin-offs are huge of the space program. Would we even be standing here talking to the world if it wasn't for the space program? No way. On our computers, no way. It's all results of the space program. Some of it comes right out of the military, industrial complex. And so when we talk about this issue, another little point to add in is we don't talk about the militarization of space. It's different from the militarization of Earth. The militarization of space is not based on weapons so far. The plans are, yes, but the reality can change because of us. It's the weaponization. And for years, some of us tried to use that language, and now you will start to hear it. I even heard it come out of China and Russia. I was so happy this last couple of weeks. I can almost not share the happiness with you because there's so much sadness in me, too, about what's going on on the planet. Why do I do this? Each of us have our reasons for being here today and for focusing on this issue. Mine is 500 million orphans. How could that be? When I started looking at this issue when I was a school teacher, we heard 50,000 orphans, and I thought, how are they going to find homes for 50,000 orphans? They're going to need therapy. They're going to need help. Orphans? Now, the UN, a couple of years ago even, said what they know about is hundreds of millions of orphans. Can you imagine what these children must be feeling and thinking and how they're being raised? I mean, talk about the problems that we're about to have unless we jump in and take care of these children. And my other reason is the other, I call them uh, animals, the other animals, because we are. What about what's going on with the animals, <laughs> you know? I mean, we're destroying the environment, the animals, the water. We're two-thirds water. And now look at the radiation. I'm in Oregon. You're here in California. I hope you're not eating fish. I mean, how sad is this? So one of the things that we're going to get out of not just the spin-offs and the opportunities and benefits for the whole world by ending the war industry and transforming it into a space industry the von braun vision is we're going to have contact and i can only promise you that what i have been told is that they will come in if there are two barometers met one we ban all space-based weapons. That's what's doable. If you talk, yes, we need to get rid of nukes. We need to get rid of drones. Most of the activists jumped in when it was too late to stop it. And if you look at how many there are and what they're doing right now, it is so horrible. But we can prevent the basing of weapons in space and on celestial bodies, on crafts, on the 
farms, schools, hotels, labs, whatever they start to build in space on asteroids. If they're going to mine the asteroids, they're going to mine the asteroids. Then we have to make sure that that weapon, and they have now committed in both Russia and the United States and other countries billions of dollars already to mine the asteroids. OK, we cannot be too late on this issue of the UFO issue because we have been told that these cosmic cultures will come in. And then can you imagine the solutions that we'll learn about from beings that have come this distance that are not here to intervene. They are not going to intervene. They're not here to dominate and control us. They're not here to steal our ovaries and resources. That is not what they're here for. They, too, have evolved. That's part of your message. And now we must. And this is a barometer. One of the barometers I mentioned is to ban all space-based weapons. The other one is to not set off a nuclear bomb. And that could happen. And why would it happen? Because the people like us who are hearing the lectures from the secret space program event have not dealt with this part of the issue, the overlay to the issue. And so we have this opportunity right now. Now, I mentioned to you that the Russians and Chinese have now agreed to work on their treaty to ban weapons from space. Here, I have something else that I want to share with you. On June 10th, there was a meeting, actually, after that, too, in Bolivia, where 133 nations of the G77, there were 30 heads of states there. How many of you heard about that meeting? Good. Then what you heard is that they're coming together to form their version of a new world order. So two-thirds of the countries on the planet don't want weapons in space. They don't want war anymore. They want an order that will help feed the poor, provide sustainable living in their countries. Poverty was a big issue. Environment is, of course, a big issue there. And now I want to ask you, how many of you know about the Treaty of Talalaco, about a ban on nuclear weapons? Do you know about a ban on nuclear weapons? Nobody. This is, this is very, in one, no, nobody. Years ago, all the countries of Latin America and the Caribbean signed a treaty to ban all nuclear weapons from their countries. The Treaty of Talalaco, we heard nothing about this. They have banned nuclear weapons from their boundaries. It's a real treaty. Isn't that astonishing that we never heard about that? Talk about secrets. Now, if weapons are put into space, that could make that treaty null and void. So we know we're going to get those countries when they hear about this need to ban, to prevent the weaponization of space treaty on board. So this is part of the secret. I think one of the biggest secrets of the space program is that the world is coming together, and we don't even know about it. We don't know what the benefits and opportunities are of space, because you haven't yet downloaded the space spinoff books. Do it, because it's free. We haven't made contact with world leaders. And this is one of the things I want to mention to you, too, that needs to get done. We need to reach out to world leaders. Now, Steve Bassett has done the most amazing job working to get to the Congress. Thank heavens. And I worked the Congress for years. And now I realize that we need world support to reach the Congress. To, we need help. And one of the things that we can do, you and I, is start to contact world leaders, heads of the man-made boundaries we call countries, and say to them, whatever you want to say about what you've learned here, knowing that we have to be very careful because some of them are not quite ready, as you may know, to hear about the UFO issue. So that's why I call it cosmic cultures. But I think it's time. And if we come across as credible, 
as not just sincere, not being against them, but for them. If we find out what there is in their self-interest, what is in the interest of these leaders, we have a real chance of not just disclosing the UFO issue, but getting official disclosure on this issue. Basically, the UFO issue has been disclosed. I mean, look at these witnesses in these meetings, the Citizen Summit and all these the disclosure projects and all these things that have happened and here. The information is out there. It needs a foundation for what to do. Okay, now we know this information. They cannot be allowed to get away with doing what they're doing anymore. But if we say it that way, that's confrontational. And I don't really care whether you say it that way or not. I'm a bit confrontational myself. And I have a mouth on me that's not on film on occasion, too. But that's because I am so darn angry at what's going on on this planet. I am so sad. My husband couldn't even come. He is so depressed about this, and he thinks there's no way we're going to change anything. And you, again, he's a sophisticated 82-year-old. He's a scholar, a former actor absolutely convinced there's nothing we can do to change anything because the warriors love blood and guts, the war game is so well funded, it is so complex, and the people in the streets don't know about the space issue or the cosmic culture issue. They don't know about the secret space program. How can they? There's only a small group of us who know. My version of that is if you ever saw the biography of this person I have to look at in the third person, you can't believe how many things one person can do in a lifetime. You just can't believe it. And you can do it, and I can do it. We just have to get up and do this. What is this? My version is one simple thing. And yes, there are many things, and I don't mean to stop doing the things, feeding the children, taking care, going inside, doing all the things that we have to do to evolve ourselves and stay sane and healthy as best we can on this planet, but I mean, one thing that we can do to change the game, to break through, to break out, to make our civilization break up into space so that we can live peacefully on Earth is get that treaty signed. Just get it signed. It's a simple thing to do, but it will again put a lid on the war industry while Aikido, while allowing it to transform into a space industry. And if you don't know what that means, Read a little bit more about that, too, because I don't have time in this short amount of time to tell you all the things that are going on in space, but there are entrepreneurs building space hospitals, schools, hotels, labs, farms, industries in space. And that may sound a bit far out when there's so much suffering on the planet, but guess what? That's the replacement for the war game. That's the replacement that's going to allow the secrets to emerge as truth. And how are we ever going to get to the truth, finally? How will we ever get to the truth? How will you know what the truth is? How do you know to believe me when I say none of them are hostile? Are you in your mind saying, oh yeah, right, she doesn't know what I know. Uh-uh, I do know that. I do know that. So I'm sharing it with those of you who can hear it in that frequency. Because it is possible to live in peace and to live in a love state and frequency. It is possible. And if you do it yourself, instead of dealing with whatever the negatives are, if you can at least get into that frame of mind and that frequency, you can get that these beings have already gotten there and that's why we're not taken over in spite of rumors. We're not having right now, by the way, they did do experimenting, I should add this, years ago, but now they have figured out why we are the way they are, which is why they were doing the experimenting. Let me give you another piece because this keeps coming through me. The reason they did is they were trying to figure out why some humans sit in the light, sit in the light, the Durga energy, and why some sit in the Kali energy and fight? Why? They got that we're all egos, and they are too. So they have lives, and they concentrate, and they communicate, and they think, and they learn, and so do we. But if we're involved in a lot of the other issues and the people who are, have valid reasons, obviously, to be, who are the ones that are going to carry these messages out and get them to the world leaders who are the ones who make the decisions? Who makes the decisions? And how are we ever going to reach the U.S. Congress if they can keep saying to us, oh, yeah, but 
Iran and North Korea. By the way, the, I have talked with people in Iran at the top levels, and they would just as soon sign a treaty to ban weapons from space. I feel terrible that even though they see all the nuclear accidents, they're going for more nukes around the world, too. But I've been told that that's not going to stop as long as they plan on taking nuclear propulsion and all that into space. And we know that they're alternative energies. And we're going to hear Thomas Bearden tonight at 7 o'clock. So be sure he'll, he'll give us one of his presentations, too. Brief one, but important. We know that the alternatives exist to the problems on the planet. But what hasn't happened, as I can see it, coming out of the aerospace industry, is the vision, the Von Braun kind of vision, the vision that all of us have for what's possible, what exists in outer space, what's possible of a peaceful nature, a love nature, and the, finally, I want to just share with you what happens in the industry is these reports are the secrets. See this little, I have several of these. Now I'm in trouble. This one is not for release. Anybody want to read it? I will leave it right here for everyone to read. This, I'm going to publish some of this. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but for whoever might be in the audience to try to stop me, Bring it on, because I'm going to get this home with me. And this one, too. This one is from Oppenheimer himself about celestials. This says top secret on it that someone slipped to me. I don't know if it's in any of the books, because I haven't read UFO books, I'm sorry to say, but it's because I wanted to come from my experience and not be tainted by other ones so I can share with you a truth that I know. But this one did come to me, and it's very interesting because he's talking about international cooperation with extraterrestrial beings, Oppenheimer. So a lot of people have evolved. The ETs have evolved. The Von Brauns, the scientists of the world, one by one, some of them are evolving. Some of them you're still going to hear talking about weapons and the negative side of the positive vision. That's OK. Take out of it, I urge you, take out of it the positive parts of what people are saying. Build a scenario for yourself to write letters. Pick up a copy of this drafted treaty, which now I'll tell you I worked on with Edgar Mitchell, whom I've been working with for about 40 years. We wrote a book, by the way, that was stopped a few years ago. We got 29 of the exact same rejection letter. That was kind of interesting. So we're going to update that. He's going to Geneva next week. He's doing much better, as you may know, health-wise. So he's going on a speaking tour, a very tight speaking tour in Geneva um, to Switzerland, obviously. And he worked on this. So did Paul Hellyer, the former Minister of Defense of Canada. So did um, Abe Krieger, who was 37 years at Boeing working on everything from the SDI to many spacecrafts and projects. Will Miller, commander, retired Will Miller, who was a military advisor to Dr. Stephen Greer, Leslie Kane, many of the, or some of the witnesses also with the Disclosure Project. He's wonderful, Will Miller. And Dr. Scott Jones, some of you may know, he was a senior advisor to Senator Claiborne Pell, the senior ranking senator, the late now senior ranking Senator Claiborne Pell. And he also is retired commander, Dr. Scott Jones. He also founded, talk about evolution, from his military background, which was an intelligence background, which was quite intense, he founded the Peace and Emergency Action Coalition for Earth, acronym PEACE, Peace Inc., for which I'm now executive director so that we have a nonprofit. Um, and that's um, and then it also has input from people all around the world. This treaty that you're going to read incorporates the best of, and I won't take time to list them, all the former, current, and proposed treaties that are relevant to outer space. It incorporates the best of all that language in here. It's a real educational piece. And it has been worked on by from lawyers, back years ago to Eileen Galloway, who was the one who helped form NASA, the lawyer, she's now deceased, to many legal people, scientists, engineers, business people, across the board, educators, professors included, researchers, helped put this together over the years. And this is based on that 2008 proposed 
China-Russia Treaty. Amazing that of all things, they have come out with this statement, although we do have contacts in China and Russia working on this, I hope we're having an impact in there. They have agreed to updating their 2008 treaty for which this is the foundation, or the foundation of it is this treaty, and then this has been embellished with some of the main messages. Now, the one that you're getting is one little version behind because what we've done in the new one that we're about to send out, and it will be on the website, peaceinspace.com. It will be posted if it's not already. The webmaster's in Australia. Um, this title, the Outer Space Security and Development Treaty, was our working title, because we didn't want to steal the name of a title of another treaty, the Russia-China one. But now that it is, we're going to change that. And we added a sentence about stopping the violence and making this a peaceful treaty instead of causing more violence. There's another sentence that will be on this bottom paragraph, but the basics are all in this copy that I've sent to you. This was just changed in the last couple of days because we just got the word about the Russia and China agreeing to update this treaty. And they have, I want to add, they have called on everyone to send them ideas and suggestions. When have you ever heard that from a world leader? What? So do it. Find the way to get in touch with Putin, whom I happen to love a lot of the things that he does and a lot that he doesn't. Same with China, same with any leader, especially when he takes his shirt off and rides bareback horseback. You know, I mean, get real. These are real people, at least. If you saw, by the way, in, in the uh, opening ceremony and the closing ceremony of the Olympics, which had the full message of peace on earth and peace in space from beginning to end of the Olympics in the shows. If you didn't see them in there on YouTube, it's amazing. From opera to ballet, they brought in the arts, which all of us must do because that's how we communicate around the world too, with no language, no boundaries. This is what this treaty is about. It's about what Rusty Schweikert, some of the astronauts have said, I see the earth with no frames, no boundaries, just the geographical ones. Well, okay. We have man-made boundaries. We're going to respect them. We can respect the world leaders. Get your information. I think I don't want to go too much over time here, but we have, here I have, by the way, if anyone's interested, a stack I have of Von Brown speeches, if anybody wants to look at them, that from 74 to 77, I had the great opportunity of working with him to get this vision injected into me that I hope I've shared with you, because the message is, and it's so important, we can have peace on Earth through peace in space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. All reports look good from here in the blockhouse uh, at this time. All aspects of the mission go, T-minus 30 seconds and counting. We'll get ignition of those eight engines in the first stage.